Today's book review is on The Speaker for the Dead by Orson Scott Card. This is the second book in the Ender series and actually takes place 3,000 years after Ender's game. The backdrop of the story is that Ender and his sister write The Hive Queen and the Hedgeman, and humanity, through the course of history, vilifies Ender and develops a new attitude towards aliens based on Desmothenes' classification of life forms. As humanity spreads throughout the stars, one colony is formed under a Portuguese Catholic license on a planet that they rename Lusitania, and here the first potentially intelligent life forms since the buggers are found. They are named Pecaninos, or little ones in Portuguese, but they're also nicknamed Piggies because of their general facial structure. Strict rules are put in place by Starways Congress, the new ruling body, in an effort to protect these life forms. The rules restrict this colony's land space and growth rate. A fence is put around the colony to keep the people from contaminating the piggies, and a xenologer, Card's fancy sci-fi term for an anthropologist, is assigned to the piggies without creating undue change in their natural evolution. The story picks up following the life of the xenologer and his family and friends on this colony. Their relationship with the Pecaninos and what they learn, or don't learn, from this new species. And I'm going to have to stop right there because to tell you any more of the story would be to give it away. Okay, but seriously, it is really difficult to do a review on this book without giving away the storyline. I'll do my best to keep it as general as possible, but that may mean that you won't totally understand what I'm talking about until you actually read the book. First of all, I love the fact that although this book is the second in the Ender series, we don't actually see Ender until a good one-third of the way through the book. Some of you are thinking, huh? But let me explain. The Ender series is not really about Ender. Each book is about something, not someone. And Ender and his associates are simply witnesses to these events. There are deeper messages driving the plots. In this book, there are so many messages that we could probably spend an entire semester analyzing them. But since that would also give away the story, we'll stick to some of my favorite broader messages. The first message, and I think my favorite message in this book, is that you cannot know someone until you love them. Yes, I said that right, though it may seem backwards. This is a recurring and repetitive message throughout this book. Among the people in the story, in their interactions with each other, and in their interactions with the piggies, the point is that you can think that you know someone and by knowing them judge them. But if you take the time to love them, to see life from their perspective, then you learn to love them, and in loving them you finally truly know them. And in knowing them you cannot judge. How we could change our lives and our world if we adopted this attitude and philosophy. But we're not here to talk about philosophy, we're here to review a book. There's also an interesting political message that is quite relevant to today's political climate. The idea that interaction with another peoples, be they alien or of another race or nationality, should not be an all or nothing relationship. Each side should be treated as equals and they should learn from one another to create a better world together as a team. This is a very counterintuitive concept. Humans have always had this very ethnocentric view, believing that the world is made up of us versus thems. We also have this misconception that those who are like us are better than the thems who are not, be those definitions national, political, religious, racial, or planetary. But the beauty of Card's work is that although the plot is driven by these larger messages, the character development is so rich and complex that you don't immediately realize the characters aren't the driving force at all. I loved Novena. I have been in a situation that alienated me from the people that were my community, and I can totally relate and understand her motivations. Mira made me weep. All that brightness and talent and love, despite everything he had been through. And seeing Andrew Ender Wiggins all grown up, yet still growing. I can only imagine that I'll feel the same way as I watch my own children become men. But the piggies were amazing. Card has this uniquely astounding ability to create monsters and make them human, and to take humans and make them monsters. Speaker for the Dead is a brilliant story told boldly and without regret. The life lessons are so vividly portrayed in a charmingly broken cast that comes together in the most unexpected ways. 
There is a reason that this book won the Nebula Award in 1986 and the Hugo Award in 1987. And I stand with those judgments and give it a solid four and a half out of five stars.